So we rolling? Rolling. That's good, man. That is good. Uh, One, two, three. Hello everybody, welcome to Between Two Kegs. My name is Zach Pick, and today I've got someone special with us. His name is Michael Petacolos with Petacolos Brewing Company. Michael, thank you for being here. Oh man, I'm happy to do this. This is great. I'm already having a good time. Thanks okay. for having me. Well, we've only been here for about five seconds, so this is a good start. <laughs> Michael, well, you're a fun person. I enjoy my time with you. So hey, five seconds, it's been great. Well, we've known each other for quite some time. We have. And it's good that we continue that relationship. Michael, in uh, just under 10 years, you've accomplished quite a bit. You were once a lawyer. Still am, still am a lawyer. Some people like to say you once were, but no, that license is still active. I still do my time. I still have, I keep that license active. Oh, is that true? Once a lawyer, always a lawyer. So it's like a doctor. Once a doctor, always a doctor. You know, I, I spent a lot of time and money educating myself. I just can't throw it away and say, oh, let's let that license expire. I mean, I got it. I worked hard to get it. I'm proud of it. So I definitely keep it. I'm available for family and friends, but I really don't field phone calls from many other people these days. Good. Well, once a brewer, always a brewer. And uh, you've certainly done quite a bit these last 10 years. You've won countless awards, both internationally and nationally and locally, uh, in that order, maybe, <laughs> or the opposite order. Um, you've got a staff here that's been tenured since you've opened. A lot of them who I've known, and they love it here. Um, you. Uh, do quite a bit more that I'm going to go into. Uh, tell me what's that like to have that reputation here in town? Well, uh, it's, it's, it's actually very satisfying to create a product, you know, to, to have a vision and try to create a product that people locally can believe in and stand behind, you know, uh, and, and to realize that, you know, you're accomplishing that goal of, you know, Providing that product that people really do appreciate and enjoy and make a part of their life. So it's hugely satisfying and kind of validating to me um, to have gone through this whole process to have people, you know, tell me day in and day out, dude, your beer is awesome. I was, I was out at the bar last night, had a velvet hammer. I still love it. I will never get tired of it. You know, it's what fuels the fire, what, what keeps us going. You know, not just me, but my whole crew. Yeah, you're right. I'm profoundly proud of our crew. We're, we're different. We're unique. We're not quite like everybody else. And that's one of the recipes or one of the ingredients uh, to our success for sure. Excellent. You know, this all resonates from your family owned business. It goes so far back as mom on the uh, front page of your website. That's Tell right. Tell me a little about mom and what inspires you uh, with mom in the background. Well, uh, you know, for me, it's all about family. I love family. You know, some people work to live. Some people live to work, right? Uh, I'm one of those guys that I work to live. I, I enjoy work, but I enjoy, enjoy my time with family and friends so much more. Um, and really, yeah, that's, that's the roots of this whole thing. My mom, um, she raised me primarily um, herself and she was always a chef, right? Not, not a real chef working in a restaurant, but she could cook. And I had been away at school for several years and I came home one day and we are in her kitchen and she pulls out this big old brown bomber from the refrigerator. And I'm like, oh, what's this? And you know, takes the tap off and, or, or the cap off and pours out a beer. She's like, oh, I brewed beer. I'm like, wait, what? She goes, yeah, I brewed beer. And you know, brewing really is an extension of cooking. And I was, I was kind of surprised. I had never known she had an interest in this and I had, never been exposed to it before. I'm like, oh, all right. And so we poured beer and went out on her porch in El Paso overlooking Sunland Park, New Mexico and Juarez, Mexico and the Franklin Mountains. And we're, in, you know, just enjoying that beer. And I just started to realize, man, this beer tastes better than what I could buy at the store. And it was made by my mom. And this experience is awesome. And that was really what kind of sparked it all for me. That's really my first exposure with home brewing, my first realization that, oh, we can make beer at home that's equally as good as, if not better than, what you're buying down the street. Well, that's excellent, Mike. And, you know, it really does all, and I'm thinking about my mom right now. So, hi, mom. It's all about moms <laughs> today. Um, you it's know, a Mother's you, Day special, right? It's Mother's Day every day <laughs> when we talk about mom. You know, Michael, you've got an interesting brewery here. Um, it's very unique unique in style, unique in aspect, unique in people and culture. Uh, you've been here since 2011, really when Dallas opened the doors to craft beer. The big three came in in 2011. What was that like educating the 
people of Dallas into craft? Oh my gosh. Uh, it was a lot of hard work, but it was a lot of fun. You know, I've got, I've got two passions in life, beer and soccer. And to have turned uh, one of my passions into a job uh, was a ball. I was having so much fun. I mean, the first year I worked here by myself. I brewed all the beer. I kegged all the beer. I cellared all the beer. I delivered all the beer. I repped all the beer. I did everything. I was a one-man show, but I loved it. And I still love it. I still enjoy what I do. My role has changed a little bit from those early days, but it was so easy for me to talk about what I was doing because I had such passion for it that it never really felt like a sales, uh, a sale or trying to educate someone. I was more like, hey man, I'm brewing beer. I want to talk to you about this, something I love, something I enjoy, something that's a locally made product. And so it was all very easy for me. Um, the market definitely wasn't as knowledgeable then as it was now. Uh, and we were all finding our feet, really, those breweries that started off kind of at similar times. Um, it was kind of like the Wild West, right? Uh, the, the, we were writing history at the time. Maybe we didn't even know it. You, you were a part of this, right? Um, I remember this, your, the earliest days of brewing uh, here sure. in Dallas. You know, you, we were right there arm in arm at festivals together, you know, and it was just uh, such an, an untapped market that it was a ball because people were just soaking up the education. Good to know. Well, you know, and that's what it's all about. The, the, the memories that we shared together, Michael, the memories that people have with you, with each other, with their friends and family uh, is really what makes beer so special. That's what um, it's all about. It's all about that experience. Yeah. That's about, that's what, that's what our entire business is about. That's right. That's experience. Yeah. I, I mean, for us, I've never said that we're in the beer industry. I've always said, no, we're, in, we're not in the beer industry. We're in the entertainment industry. I think people drink because they want to be entertained. They sure. want to have a good time. And so, yes, we've got to deliver on that experience, whether you're here in our tap room or out at a festival or drinking a beer at a restaurant. People want to enjoy themselves. Sure. They want to have fun. And so it's all about laying that well, foundation gonna, to provide that experience. We're going to go into more detail into that, but for now I think our viewers might want to walk around your brewery. Let's do it, man. Let's check out this place. Let's go upstairs in the tap room. I think there's a man cave upstairs. Come on, man. Let's, let's go. Let's go play some games. Excellent. All right. Well, cheers. Thanks for the beer. Absolutely, let's man. Let's do this. Let's do it. Mike, this is your house, huh? This is it, man. This is the home away from home. This place is great. You know, I came here uh, during one of the World Cup games this year, shoulder to shoulder. Packed. Packed. Had a ball, I bet. At 8 a.m., no less. It was fantastic. It was the best. It was the greatest. The world. There's nothing like a World Cup. So, nothing like it. So it's true. You have your two loves, craft beer and soccer. Tell me a little about why soccer means so much to you in this brewery. Oh, well, I mean, it, it's, it's kind of ingrained in who I am. I've played soccer all my life. You know, I still to this day play uh, in a league. I've always loved it. Um, really, what reignited my love for soccer was the 1994, was it? In the United States there, in 94. In yeah. It was here in Dallas, and a friend of mine called me up and said, Hey, you want to go to this game? And I played soccer still at that time. But I went to that match, and it was like Nigeria and South Korea, and the atmosphere was unlike anything I had ever experienced before. You know, Nigerians beating their drums, chanting the whole time. And right then, I'm like, This is it. This is so much cooler than anything else I've ever watched. You're not cheering on a player who may play for your team this year and your rival next year, you're cheering for Americans. Once they put on that jersey, you're always cheering for those guys and it's your team. And man, I get so much joy out of following those guys and their trials and tribulations through World Cup after World Cup. I just love it. That's great, Mike. That is awesome. Great sky. You know, I look up here and I see a mouthful of awesome names. It reminds me of clearly soccer international travel, and of course, Texas. Tell me, what does all this mean? Oh God, man, uh, so much goes into the name. So much goes in, I mean, when we're talking World Cup, we've done beer specifically for the World Cup, you know. Uh, four years ago, when we did, when the World Cup was in Brazil, we did Thrilla in Brazilla, which was mm -hmm. a takeoff of the Ali Thrilla in Manila fight. And so this past World Cup in Russia, we, you know, we stuck with the Ali theme and took the rumble in the jungle and trans, uh, or change it to Rumble in Russia. 
Uh, so that was our World Cup beer this past year. But so much goes into these names. I mean, some of them have stories. Some of them are sayings that we have uh, here at the brewery that become names like Too Soon. Uh, that was an unfortunate accident. One of our brewers had a dog taken away by an owl and joking about it apparently happened too soon. And before you knew it, we had a beer named after poor old Cuddles being taken to space by an owl. That's what we say now. So that <laughs> may, uh, you know, may he rest in peace. But you know, they all have names, a lost e or they all have stories of the name. A lost epic is an anagram of Pedicolis. Sit down or I'll sit you down was a line my brother uttered when he was uh, on an episode of Cops back when he was a cop in Albuquerque many, many years ago. It's always something if you've ever operated a brewery or really any business, you'll come to learn that man, it's always something. There's always something else right around the corner. Um, but a lot goes into the name. You know, it kind of goes back to what I mentioned to you earlier, that it's about entertainment and you want to provide, you know, uh, something that's memorable, something that's happy, something that's fun. That's kind of our recipe for naming beers. Well, you know, one of the big facets in craft beer and being a successful brewery is marketing is branding, and it seems that you definitely have a take in it's something that's unique and true to style and true to brand over here at Pedicolis. That's really neat that you have this. You know, let's change gears here. Velvet Hammer, one of your oldest beers, one of your most popular beers. First beer I ever brewed, December 30th of 2011, batch one. I'm surprised you remember that date. I'll never forget it. It was fantastic. What were you doing? Were you here all by yourself? I was here all by myself on December 30th, 2011, brewing that batch of beer. The day before, I had done a water brew, and I'm like, all right. I was bound and determined to brew that beer in 2011 um, and got it done, you know, with two days to spare, to spare. Did Men's Journal call that beer one of the best in the world? One of the best in the entire world. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's another one of those things that kind of came out of the blue, um, didn't expect it, but you know, it was one of those things that um, really provides that validation that I talked about and that sure. satisfaction that we're actually producing a product that, you know, is finding objective uh, or, or receiving objective results of excellence. Good. You know, I mentioned downstairs between our two kegs, that you've won quite a bit of awards. You've got an international award, very reputable. Some of them being here at the Great American Beer Fest in Denver year after year, uh, some of them overseas. You recently won US Beer Championship in yes. 2018. Yeah. Tell me what beer and what was that like? Uh, we had multiple beers medal. Three beers, one gold. That was a Velvet Hammer. Um, it's always something and Sledgehammer and uh, Royal Scandal won a silver medal. Um, but again, that's another one of those things. I woke up to a text from uh, a fellow brewer uh, in Hawaii who said, hey man, awesome, way to go. And I'm like, I don't know what he's even talking about. So I wake up, I'm in a fog, and then I start seeing the news. It's like, wow, sweet, best, you know, best brewery in the, in the United States. That's awesome, right. you know, uh, and it's a, it's a, big pat on the back to my whole crew because our team you know a lot of people th think this is me this is not me it was me that first year it's not me anymore man it's a big team and you know those guys are just knocking it out of the park and carrying the torch and doing exactly uh you know carrying our reputation and making me proud so you've got more things up here looks like upstairs you've got a uh, beer cave yeah um you know some sport games and some uh, brew. Uh, I guess we don't just call it, uh, bar games. Yeah, you know? darn I mean, right. Little ping pong, foosball, shuffleboard. You know, come on, let's play. Let's go play foosball. Let's do it. All right. Let's whip up on you in some bar games. I'm in. So this uh, constant right turn spiral staircase. I love I don't the spiral see, staircase. I don't see these at many breweries. You don't see many of these anywhere. That's it's true. It's one of the unique little facets of this. Brewery and tap room. Okay, all right. Uh, something I might have had when I was a little child of some sort. L little so, foosball? Yeah, of course. I'm, I'm actually pretty good. And I don't spin. Are you? I'm I, terrible. I don't spin. I'm terrible. Uh, if we want to play a game I'm good at, we can play ping pong. Well, I'm good at ping pong too. You want to play I'm really ping pong? I'm good at all bar sports. I've been pretty good well, at let's, it. Let's, let's, let's play a little of this and then we'll, get, we'll pick up the ping pong paddle. Okay, right? let's do. All right, no spinning. No spinning. All right, I hate that you're good. Ah. There it is. He wins. 1-0, <laughs> champ. Done. 
right I here. I let that happen. And you're the, you're the one who plays. Yeah, I'm a little rusty. Rusty on the rest. What else you got over here? Come on, let me, let me, let me spank you in some ping pong. Okay. Because you said you were good, right? I have a ping pong table in my garage. All right. My truck won't fit in it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. Will he score? Will he All score, right. ladies and gentlemen? You weren't kidding. You're crushing me here. Huh? All right, Mike. Don't you have to play with a beer in your hand, Michael? That's no problem. That's not bad. I can't keep it down. Oh! He got me. <laughs> nice work. Mike, you are good at that, Michael. Not bad. Darn it. I wanted to score that point, but hitting you may have been even better. Uh, you know, what we haven't seen is your brewery. Got to check out the brewery. Yeah, let's go look at your brewery. Check out the brewery. Let's go. Finally, we get to, uh, get to where it all begins in the brew house. Where it all begins. That's right. The grain room. The grain room portion of our brew house, which also features eight taps of beer, right? <laughs> I see this is for uh, the brew crew that work here. They obviously need their own tap tap room is that right darn right and in the early days this was kind of our tap room we hadn't finished out uh you know the tap room at all and so this was this was the main show back then but yeah this is kind of the employee hangout at this point you, you've got to have that you got to have that in the room. so but, michael i think what's important here in this little room is your mill and your milling room is that what they call it yeah i mean we call it our grain room but okay. yeah definitely we've got the mill here this is where the process starts you know it's Operating a brewery, people think, oh, it's a production brewery, but we're operating three different businesses here. Really, okay. we're operating a production brewery. We self-distribute, so we're operating a distributorship, and then a retail tap room. We consider ourselves operating three different businesses here, so this is just one facet of one of our businesses. And this so is where it grain. starts. You pick up your grain in the Midwest, like yep. many other breweries. Yeah. You've got to pre-order or pre-purchase that years ahead of yourself. Is that correct? So you've got you to do that with hops. You've got to do that with hops. Okay. You don't have to purchase as far in advance with your grain. All right. Um, it's a little bit more readily available. We're not contracted out as far, but you're right. Managing raw materials is a big part of production in and of itself because, yes, our hops are purchased up for the next five, ten years even, which seems right. almost ridiculous, but that's what you got to do. It's how sure. you manage those resources. All right, so, Michael, we're in the heart of the place here. I see a lot of uh, fermenters. Yeah, in yeah. yeah. Let's get you to work, though, man. Look, there's work to be done here. This is a. Got to get this floor. Got to get this floor clean. Oh, oh, I all can, right. I can clean yeah. Floor let's get this. Here. Right. Spray off that grain. This is a piece of cake. Not bad. All day I can do not this. Not good, but not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Thank you, Mike. And that's why those done? floors are sloped. Okay, I, that, that, there you that go. was my first question. I was well, wondering why I was walking So let's sideways. keep you here for a while and we'll get you doing a little kegging, you know, maybe a little cellaring. Okay. We'll, we'll make you do it all, right? You got a few hours once we're done with this? I'm familiar that, with the back of the brew house. That's I'd how it works. I'd be back here. All right, let's you get know. you in. All right. But yeah, tanks, this is where it all happens. You know, we've expanded a few times, brought in more tanks, but this is where we so, brew beer. This so is where we make the product. Brew deck? That's right, brew house, brew kettle, mash tun, brewing beer right now. What are you brewing right 14 now? 14 barrels, looks like, uh, I don't know, it is Velvet Hammer. I thought, I was going to say it looks like Velvet yeah, Hammer, but it looked a little light. There's our brew sheet, it's Hammer. So we got a barrels. live action with yeast coming over yeah, here. Yeah, that one's like fermenting right now, right? So there's some blow off going through our CIP arm into uh, sanitized water. So you're seeing beer right there, CO2. Beer being made, yeast doing its work. Well, thanks, Mike, for bringing me in your brew house. Uh, Absolutely. The last place that I want to go see is where you store it all. Yeah, we got to check that out, right? That's the other one of our businesses, distributorship. Okay. Where do we store all this beer? Let's check it out. Let's do it. All right, all right Michael, here we have distribution warehouse. Distribution. Here's Another business. Second business. So we've talked about marketing. We've talked about brewery. We've talked about... Pops, mop, right, right. grain, where to purchase all that. Right. This is distribution where it all ends. Or begins. It's the last, well, it's the last step of the brew house. 
the brewery business, it's the first step in the distribution business. Now we've got the beer in our possession and it's a matter of distributing it out to the market, right? And that's a business in and of itself. All right, I'm looking around here. Yeah. There's one thing I don't see. Right. Cans or bottles. Yep, it's great, right? Where are they? Yeah, I don't know, they're not in here. We're, you know, we're, unco we're, we're unconventional. We like to do things differently. Unconventional? Huh? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Great pun. But you know, when everybody's doing one thing, we like to do something else. Um, everyone is packaging. Everyone's in a bottle or a can. You know, back in the day, you built a brand on tap handles in kegs. And then once you kind of saturated that market, then you can go in with your cans and that's not the model that is used any longer. Most breweries start with bottles, cans, kegs, all right out of the gate. Our idea has always been, let's keep some aces in the hole. That's why we didn't open a retail tap room until a year and a half ago. Um, it spurred growth. Guess what? We're gonna spur growth, we'll double our production the day we bottle or can a beer, right? Because it's gonna be a big, huge deal. We, we've been around almost seven years having never done it. And so we're kind of feeding the fire. Um, we'll, we'll keep, it's gonna happen one day, but sure. we're, we're gonna keep that card in our back pocket a little bit longer. Well, it's definitely unconventional. You know, I don't know one production brewery that can sustain life without packaged goods, packaged beer, packaged that. And, and we're fortunate to have been, to have put ourselves in, the situa in that situation where we can survive on kegs and kegs alone, the margins are best on kegs. And when that day comes, we're like, oh shoot, you know, we're slowing down, we need to boost our growth. We'll boost our growth and we'll do it with cans or, or bottles. But it's a little cold in here and you know my love of soccer, so I, I got you a little gift. All right. Right? Not a lot of breweries are going to have the old traditional soccer no, scarf. Sir. You know, it's cold. Let's get this scarf around you. You're looking good, brother. <laughs> thank you, Michael. You bet, man. I appreciate your time today. For sure. I've okay. enjoyed this. It's been a ball. And thank you all for uh, another episode of Between Two Kegs. Stay tuned for our next one. Until then, cheers. Cheers. Yes. Success. <laughs>